welcome to this another episode of ECCB Connects. This week, Governor Timothy N.J. Antoine will reflect on his first year in office. Governor, welcome again to ECCB Connects. Thank you. One year already, believe it or not. Yes, one year. February marked one year. Your assessment of the year? Very encouraging start. I feel very encouraged by the progress we made in my first year. And um, I think, frankly spoken, much of what we set out to do was accomplished. And we hold ourselves accountable. We keep a scorecard. So I speak with some confidence about that. Mm -hmm. Governor, when you um, assumed office, you laid out a vision for the ECCU and the ECCB, a four-pillar vision. Um, take us through um, what you've accomplished under those four pillars? Well, a lot. And, um, and it's been total team. I think we start with the obvious. We've maintained the strength of our EC dollar, which is exchange rate stability. Uh, we espouse a strong dollar policy, and we've maintained that. Throughout the last year, the currency was backed uh, an average 97%. In some cases, 98 but an average 97%. So on that score, we continue to maintain a strong dollar. Now, on financial stability, I think we saw several areas uh, of distinct improvement. Certainly, uh, financial stability has improved. We were able to resolve two trouble banks in Anguilla. Um, and, and as a result, we now have National Commercial Bank of Anguilla. And that is making steady progress. Uh, we've also seen across the currency union improvement in the performance of our national banks and our international banks. So whether you look at capital adequacy or you look at profitability, um, we saw improvement. But also, very importantly, asset quality, as measured by non-performing loans, uh, which fell from a high of 17%, well, 17% at the end of uh, 2015 to around 12.5% at the end of 2016. So um, that is very important progress. Now, of course, challenges persist, but on financial stability, uh, we definitely have seen improvement with respect to the performance of our commercial banks. There are other issues we are attending to, such as the concerns about bank fees and charges, and um, this is a matter that will come before the Monetary Council um, in early March um, for further attention. So we move on to fiscal and on debt. On fiscal and debt sustainability, our job really there is advocacy because it is really for our governments to perform. But I am pleased to note that we have seen improvement in the fiscal accounts. Um, many of our governments were able to run their primary surpluses uh, this last year. And overall, there's an improvement in the fiscal accounts. We have also seen um, a reduction in the debt-to-GDP ratio for several of our countries. So we're down from 76%, we're around 75 thereabouts. So it's slight, but it's moving in the right direction. And that's an important target for us. Remember, we're trying to get a debt to GDP ratio of 60% by 2030. And we also did quite a lot of advocacy this year on, in the areas of fiscal responsibility, uh, which is to encourage our governments to get more fiscal space to do things and to have more fix fiscal flexibility in times of downturn. And we advocated as well on the prudent and judicious use of funds derived from citizenship by investment programs. So we are satisfied that we are making progress on that pillar. When we look at growth, competitiveness, and employment, that remains a huge challenge. I think at the moment we recorded around 2, 2.2, percent growth uh, in 2016. Um, that is not bad, but not good enough. Where do we want to be? We want to be at 5% per annum or more. And so that remains a challenge. But what we did in the first year was to build a foundation for how we are going to get together, attempt to raise the trajectory of growth. And there are a number of actions that uh, we're taking in this coming year uh, which will address that issue of growth and competitiveness. So that pillar is, I think, is foundational. And we spent a lot of time building the foundation um, in my first year. Um, and building on what had gone before, because of course we're not starting from scratch. On, in the area of organizational effectiveness, we have made significant strides. I think my first responsibility was having articulated the vision to 
engage with our staff in the bank on how together we can move forward and advance the agenda of the ECCU. And so I spent the first few months listening very atten intently to, to my team, plug in what I call energy leaks, uh, because I understand for high performance organizations you need energy. And that's the key, managing energy. So we were able to plug some key energy leaks. We changed some internal policies to assist us with that. We were able to revise our staff regulations, which essentially is a guide, the rule book, for how uh, we conduct staff relations in the bank. We were able to revise that uh, from April. And then, of course, we were able to launch the podcast, ECDB Connects, uh, from April. And that has been very well received across the currency union. A lot of people now have a better idea of what we do in the ECCB, how we serve them, and we have listened very carefully as well as we've moved around. Um, a very important element of our stakeholder relations strategy was our country outreach. We did all of our countries. We spent time engaging heads of state, cabinets, leaders of opposition, business community, bankers association, labor unions, faith community, um, as well as um, the media. And I found those extremely helpful, both from the point of view of not just sharing information with our citizens, but also hearing from our citizens about things that they care about, issues that they wish the central bank would work on and help them on. And uh, we found that very, very instructive. So I can say honestly that I am very satisfied with the progress we made in one year. It went by very quickly. Um, I've had great support from staff management, board, and council, and I'm looking forward to my second year. Okay. One of the objectives you had under organizational effectiveness was returning the bank to profitability. You're now close to the end of your first financial year. What is the situation? Well, I would have preferred if you asked me the question at the end of the financial year. Uh, when the books are closed. But I will say that as of now, the bank is making a profit. Uh, we expect that we will make a small profit at the end of this financial year, after three years of losses. And we have every expectation and plans to increase the profitability of the bank going forward. So again, we are seeing a turnaround in that regard. Another important element under organizational effectiveness was the the introduction of the mantra, the star mantra. And recently you made, a, there was a change to the mantra. You had, um, it was um, service excellence, teamwork, accountability results, and there has been a change. What's that change and why was there a need for a change? There was teamwork, we've added truth telling. Why did we do that? Well, I think we need to understand the bank. ECCB is a regional institution consisting of members from across the currency union. So we're div diverse, different nationalities, different backgrounds, different personalities, different uh, training, uh, disciplines, and so on. But diversity is our strength. But one of the things that I, I, I want to make sure we do is to speak truth to power always, to speak truth to each other, with grace, but to speak truth to each other. As professionals, to be able to value opinion and show opinion and not worry about what we may think uh, you know, about, about opinion. Just share them. Because I believe the best way of generating ideas and allowing ideas to flow in the organization is for people to, to speak freely, uh, respectfully, but freely, and let the best ideas come forward. Uh, don't stifle them at any level of the organization. As a governor of the bank, I want to hear the best ideas from the bank, from all of our staff in the bank. Um, and so what we're trying to do is to encourage a culture of truth-telling where people, as professionals, recognize that they are expected to give their opinion, their professional views, and to understand that as we share those views, we enrich the organization and the value that we can bring to the advice we give to our governments, the advice we give to our clients, particularly our governments, but the people we serve. So that's a shift in our culture. Um, and that's why we revised the star mantra. So it's now service excellence, teamwork, and truth-telling, accountability, and results. Okay. 
And on every screen in the, com in, the, in the bank, the mantra is there as a daily reminder, constant reminder of the values or core values, what we stand for as a bank. Governor, one year down, what are your priorities for the next year? Well, one of the things that I did not mention, but uh, we've made significant advancement on is the completion of a strategic plan. That is almost done, and I'm looking forward to sharing the strategic plan with our stakeholders, our citizens, our external partners, so that they can see exactly what it is that we are aspiring to do and are doing, and how they could hold us accountable for our results. So later on this year, uh, I will in fact be, uh, we will be publishing our strategic plan. I think we can also look forward to seeing the bank improve in its own profitability, uh, based on measures that we are taking, both on the income side and on the expenditure side of the bank. And that is important to give us the wherewithal to serve our citizens, to serve our clients, to serve our governments, uh, to make sure we have the right talent, continue to attract and retain the right talent that we need to do the big mandate, to serve the important mandate that is, has been given to us. I'm also looking forward to some very concrete results in the areas of financial stability. There are risks that we face, such as the risking. Uh, there are risks that we face uh, in the national banking sphere that we believe that we can best handle if we come together. And therefore, we believe bank consolidation is important to allow our citizens to have the best chance of retaining national banks and, and having national banks serve them as, 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 as well or even better than they've served them for the last 30, 40 years. So that's a, a definite area. I'm looking forward to see us implement some key projects because to raise the level of growth in our economies, we have to do certain things. So for example, I'm looking forward to see the establishment of the partial credit guarantee scheme. I'm looking forward to see the establishment of the credit bureau. I'm looking forward to see us create more opportunities for young people to have access to finance and therefore to job creation, or to either to create their own jobs or be in a position to, to secure a job. Um, those are areas that, are, that, I, that I hold dear, that, that as a bank we, we very much exercise and constantly are, are working on. And um, I'm looking forward to some results there. And in the case of, in the area of, of, of organizational effectiveness, we are going to continue to engage our citizens, um, and we're going to continue to invest in the staff of the bank. So a very big part of our effort this year is going to be investing in our human resources um, at all levels, uh, raising our leadership and management capability, investing in technical competence and excellence across the bank to make sure that we are on the cutting edge and we're able to serve our governments and to serve our clients and to serve our, our citizens in the best way possible. That's a, a major undertaking for us, and uh, I'm excited about the possibilities for our staff. We've already begun uh, in the area of risk management, uh, we've, in the area of leadership, uh, in the area of reserve asset management, and the list goes on and on. Right across the bank, top to bottom, we are very much engaged in investing in and building up the capacity of our staff and our team, and um, I'm excited about that. Okay, Governor, you've spoken about the work, the achievements, um, what's to come. But being governor is a demanding job. It's a huge undertaking. What has the experience been like for you? Personally, very good. I, I had the advantage of being familiar with the bank and many of the members in the bank, management and staff, as well as board and council. So in that sense, I believe I was off to a running start. I was able to hit the ground running. So my transition was, was smooth. Um, I have obviously there's certain key operating principles that, that govern how I approach life, starting with my core values, my top life values, which are faith, family, and service to others. So those have guided me and continue to guide me. I, I understand the need for work-life balance, so I've maintained a good exercise regime, try to have good nutrition, um, um, good family time, um, good play time, um, but of course, long, long hours of work, and that's what it is. That's that's, it is what it is. I'm I'm happy to serve. I I really feel that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, working on the challenges facing our region and helping to bring solutions, and that energizes me. So as a, as a, as as exhausting as the days are, some days um, I'm also energized by the fact I'm working on things that are meaningful. 
I believe I'm making a difference, and the hope of reward sweetens labor. So I, I look forward to results, and, 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 and that drives and energizes. So it's been a good year. I, I give God thanks. I thank the team, uh, management and staff of the bank who worked with me, Deputy Governor, um, former Managing Director uh, Jennifer Nero, now retired, Acting Manager and Director Ingrid uh, O'Loughlin, um, other manage, man, management and staff, all of whom have rallied around me, board and council. Uh, I cannot complain about support. I think I've had good support, and I continue to be encouraged by the team approach um, at the bank. So I am very excited, actually, about my second year. Governor, thank you very much for speaking with us again on ECCB Connects. And congratulations, Shambhalan. I must say that uh, ECCB Connects has been very, very positive, and I want to congratulate you personally for all your efforts in that regard and for the country outreach. Uh, I think we've learned a lot on the road, so thanks very much. Thank you, sir. You're watching ECCB Connects, protecting our currency, developing our region. And now for this week's financial tip. Our children are our future. Teach them to save by opening savings accounts for your little ones and encouraging them to save a portion of their allowances. Take them to the bank periodically to deposit those savings and also for the experience. To view any episode of ECCB Connects anytime, any place, at your convenience, check out our YouTube channel, ECCB Connects. That's it for another episode of ECCB Connects. Remember to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join us again next week for another program.